How are you doing? Pretty good. Got myself some more drinks. Nice. Uh, Perfect. Uh, and uh, I've gone ahead, Eli. I've put Neo Orangutan on the sheet as a possible morph. It just exists there okay. now as that. So uh, okay. if we ever want to switch over to morphs, I now have that ready. Yay. Because I'll right. probably end up dropping the synth whenever I can. Right, because you have to be in a uh, a biological body or have a yeah. biological brain to use psionics. Yeah, and I guess the best way to handle uh, the situation right now moving forward would just be like, I just don't use any more psionics the rest of the scene. It seems to make the most sense. Yeah, that works for me. Thumbs up for Mila. Apparently his yeah. <laughs> sandwich maker is on the floor, I guess. Yeah, I'm eating on the floor so I don't eat over my desk, over my computer desk. Yeah, that's how people normally do it, right? So all the crumbs go on the floor. <laughs> well, I still have a plate. For me to vacuum up. Really well, if nice. you got a plate, you don't need to worry about it. Just put it on the table. <laughs> yeah, I feel I'm, like I'm, I'm concerned. I feel like I'm the only person in existence sometimes who's just like, I'm okay just eating anywhere because I don't make a huge mess of things. <laughs> I'm just worried that I might make a mess and... And then if I make a mess, it'll be forever cataloged in a video. So, <laughs> yeah. So now, instead, the recording is going to show that you eat on the floor. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's an improvement. <laughs> I'll stream myself vacuuming it up, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Live Wednesdays, Eli eats a sandwich off camera. <laughs> uh, is it... How's everyone doing today? Uh, Isadora, can you uh, turn yourself up a little bit? I've got you up to 200%, but you're still, like, way lower than everyone else. Uh. Alright, now um. I need a napkin. Oh, I got the rug here. What about <laughs> now? Uh, yeah, let me turn you back down a little bit. <laughs> Well, no, when you turn yourself up to a perfect level, that's fine. But then when I have you boosted, I get the static effect. So it's better that you're yeah. at the right level on your end, and then I turn you down rather than me turn you up. On Twitch, yeah. Well, actually, this is all just Discord side. Oh. But yeah, no, you're good now. Uh, Sean, can you say something? Because you were doing weird hey, things. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, you're better now. Okay. Am <clears throat> I doing good? All right. Cool. Yeah, when you had when you were having your video problems, you were coming out super loud, but with like a lot of air static behind you too, and it was like, oh, interesting. Well, yeah, I don't know what's causing that, but you're good now. Maybe he, because he's right next to an AC unit. That's also true. I am right next to a AC unit. Hi. So, Isadora makes you eat on the floor, is what I'm hearing. Uh, yep, yep. I am forced to eat <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because his desk area is like the only place I don't really clean. So he moves to eat the places that you do clean, so yeah. he doesn't have to. <laughs> exactly. I'm I'm big brain in it. I don't know what you want to know. <laughs> but um We got a couch, so there's another spot I shouldn't eat. But we have a couch. Nice Ooh, couch. Weird flex. But I was but okay. just saying, Saying exciting things that we that's a, happened to it's us very since exciting last week. Thing for us. <laughs> yeah, the next four hours is going to be filled with things that they own. Oh, that's um, a new couch. Yeah, that's nice. I have this in. Yep. Let me show you a picture right. of the front door. Uh, we also bought two large plants. Just flex. <laughs> real or fake? Hundred percent real. Yeah. And the cat's already trying to kill one of them. Yeah, I'm not going to let him. I did some research on the plant today. It's not... <laughs> Good. Glad plant to arch nemesis yeah. with cat. I've set the spray mm -hmm. bottle next to the thing, because he's just scared of it. He doesn't associate <clears throat> it with me yet. So. Nice. Nice. Yeah, just it's got two more days, and I'm moving out of this place, ending uh, the last chapter of my uh, college rentals. Before I go move back in with the parents until I start my job, hopefully one day. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Hey, you know, new phase of stuff. Should be fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Yay. 
I was supposed to start back in June, but uh, due to COVID, everything's just getting pushed back. So they're still trying to determine how they're trying to bring in the, the new talent. Yeah, but, that's uh, the fun part. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So just uh, waiting it out. Take it day by day. All right, then. So I guess if we're ready, uh, Eli, you want to take charge? Sure. Yeah. Uh, last time on our our thrilling ad- adventure sequence, we had uh, the, the the party had been recruited by uh, uh, the party had been recruited by a a mysterious individual by the name of Doctor Hilbert, uh, who had recruited them to retrieve someone who had been either on ice or stuck in VR on some sort of ship. Uh, now you guys have, have found, or the ship was already discovered and you guys were just the extraction team. You're supposed to go in, pick up, uh, General Nell Amaral and then withdraw him. However, since arriving here, you've came into several complications. Uh, weirdly, he doesn't seem to be on any VR. So your assumption is that he might be on, uh, on ice. And the giant ship that you found him on is some sort of weird hospital ship that seems to have gone deranged. Uh, the first thing you think you found is that the, the layout is weirdly different than what you had originally discovered uh, on, his, on the original scans. And the second thing is you found a weird uh, museum of old medical practices. And moving past that, you had found what looked like an operating room where maybe one of these uh, museum uh, these these museum exhibits were might might have been even being crafted. And you guys had started going in. You were starting to get more warnings from the AI that you needed to go to a secure area and wait for an escort. And you guys had just pushed on through. So you guys went into this operating room and. Uh, an, a doc bot attacked you where there was a it had a bunch of different surgical arms and another creature was something that it had been working on which seemed like some sort of uh, enlarged humanoid with with metal plates grafted on it and one arm was a was an axe and another was some sort of machine gun so you guys should start fighting it two of your members one was uh dolphin and Griffin, so Anarchy Bird, Anarchy Bird and Dolphin uh, had ran up and poisoned this this large modified humanoid, which had pretty much taken it out of the fight. It had uh, it had a cumulative minus forty to all of its actions. Some of its own abilities, it ignored some of those, but even with a minus twenty, it was rolling very terribly on any of its rolls, and so. I think you said like was, minus forty yeah. cumulative. Yeah, it's not looking too good. Yeah, it's it's not looking too good. It's still fighting. It's still technically in the fight because it just hasn't taken a lot of damage, but it it's not being very effective. However, the main threat in this room is the whatever robot doctor uh, is is trying to perform surgery on all of you uh, because it it had damaged some of Joe King's. Dr- droids by actually stripping armor off them i believe or maybe maybe a wounded one i think i think it used a buzz saw and, and slashed open one it um one. it yeah it wounded one uh it had it had first grabbed baron von squilliams and he using his his octopus abilities had managed to to squirm out of there and, and pull out of its reach however dauphine was not so lucky and this creature scooped her up and where we left off last time, uh, this creature had made necessary changes, aka it had begun it had began beheading her, and so it managed to score a superior success on its roll, and with enough damage, it wounded the target and actually chopped off Dauphine's head. So. As this happens, I need everyone in the group to make uh, a willpower stress test. So this is a stressful situation in which you've seen her just killed. Mm -hmm. And so because of this, I need everyone to roll this willpower check. So I believe the way to do it is roll using your... 
Well, no, you don't have to. Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, I'll go ahead and click the willpower button then, uh, which does the thing and multiplied it by three, and I still rolled way over. All right. So joking is fine. Uh, you've seen enough uh, video game death that you're a little, you're you're kind of immune to this. I'm inured to both, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so both Sean and Anarchy Bird fail, which Oof. means. Um, you're viewing extreme violence, uh, I would say. So this is going to be... Sean, you're going to take three points of stress. And Anarchy Bird, you're going to take one point of stress. I guess you really oh, didn't boy. care about Dolphine very much. I mean, it's someone just got their head cut off. That's kind of important. Let's not forget this. So, <laughs> Thanks for your empathy. <laughs> Yeah, I believe that goes under your mental, um, and it goes under stress. Yeah, uh, it's not. Points. Yeah, neither of those should be higher than your. I think it's just a. It's got two T's. I think that's the. Uh, yeah, T T. So I have like an eight on that. No idea what it's derived off of right now, but so uh, I, I got an eight, so I'm doing pretty good. So I just put three into stress. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, stress works similarly to damage, <clears throat> in that if you. If you go over your your threshold, your trauma threshold, which is just TT, mm -hmm. then that's when you start taking like you start taking traumas. And when you have a trauma, that's that's basically the similar to having a wound in that you have a minus twenty or a minus uh, I think it's a minus twenty or a minus ten to your um your actions. Um okay. once you get um, once you take even more, like once you get past twenty, uh, then then that's when you start getting uh, like mental breakdowns. Oh, so, shit. Uh, yeah, Theta just put in a little chat there about what lucidity is. That's what the LUC stands for. Um, okay. Yeah. So the two of you take that stress as you see them, as you see this robot doctor just execute Dauphine. And Baron von Squilliams, what are you going to do? You see this creature chop her head off, and with its its arms that are holding her, they they start moving towards the side of the room where you see there are uh, there are large vats up against the wall, and one of its one of its arms is starting to unscrew one of the vats, and it's getting it looks like it's getting ready to put her body. Uh, in some sort of storage. Uh, shoot. Well, I'm I'm going to shoot it. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go to combat. Da, 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 da. Yeah, time to unload on the machinery. Yep. We're going to do burst fire plus 1d10 damage if I hit. Okay. And this creature doesn't have any fray against range since it's just you can just shoot at the actual, like, box mechanism of it and so you blast away at it uh your roll was uh a success so it's under 65 and you rolled uh a, a superior success because it's over 33 so you do get to roll that superior result once so it's a total of 14 points of damage as you as you blast at it um you bop, you take some shots into it uh it does look like it's hurt it okay you see, you see several sparks fly uh, as because it's kinetic, correct? Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, yeah, it's uh, piercing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, it's not enough to actually cause a wound, but you do blam, 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 fire a few shots, and you know sparks start flying, and uh, it, it has taken some damage. Cool, cool. Would you like to do anything else? Um, is there anything I can like go and take? Uh, partial cover behind. Uh, there are uh, there's a there's an entire wall of of vats of of several body parts. Some of them are empty. Some of them have what look like several limbs in it. You see arms and legs and and organs floating in in several uh, vats that are still full. Um, there's there's probably several tables of some kind. So you could you could try to take cover. Um, yeah, I would like to just have something that I can use to take cover. So. 
uh, that can't just pick me up uh, easily and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So you 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 scramble for some sort of cover, and it's already acted. So it it used one of its uh, threat pool to to go first. So it's already gone. So Joe King. I guess I shut down. Yeah, so you guys hear a uh you you get a, a strange signal over your uh your your comm links. It sounds like it's coming from from Dr. Hilbert. Uh you it, it there's there's a little bit of a static but you hear uh there's 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 signals on on the radio. We we're, we're, we've got several incoming. Oh, and that is look good for him. You hear Joe King, uh, you hear Joe King's voice on all your comm links go, uh, well, sounds like that's my cue to leave. And then all the bots that have been fighting around and flying just start falling and hit, hit the ground uh, on the, all around the room. And his link that he's been in the whole time, you know, on all your VR and all your muses disappears. And you hear Dr. Hilbert, uh, guys, uh, Joe King's flex bot just shut down. What, what are we, what are we doing? What's happening in there? Lock the door and hold on. <laughs> All right. So that's Joe King's turn. Uh, just and a then, uh, quick, uh, before we yeah. do it, uh, if you guys haven't looked at it in the rules, there's a tack net thing, which gives you all bonuses for being in a communications grid with one another. Oh, If you haven't looked that up yet. Uh, what page is that on? I gotta, I gotta remember now. I was reading. Uh, essentially, well, if, you if you're... It, that'll help. Yeah, essentially, if you're, uh, if you're all working as a group and you're sharing your information, it's like basically being in a, uh... Let's see, modify attack net. Where is it? It's all, it's all together. But this book, man... Tactical Networks, uh, page 327. TacNet allows a group and their muses to gear and share in real time uh, strategy. You share maps. Uh, analyze uh, positions. Overwatch allows you to get a plus 10 modifier and perceive tests. Indirect fire. Medical data. All I believe you have to have a tactical net. Well. One would say that don't we always have everything all the time? <laughs> well, one just say it's like a bunch of AR display. <laughs> one would say that. One has said that. Oh, there we go. Technic complexity two two G gear points. Yeah, since it says a uh, gear point, it looks like you have to have like it looks like maybe everyone would have it, or would would, would be one purchase. No, I know. Uh, I guess one it would be a group it, purchase. Right? So the way it says it, it speaks of it like so. It says tacnets allow a group and their muses to share real time situations. It sounds like one person just has to buy it, and then you have it for the group. Yeah, that that would seem to make sense here. That makes sense to me as well. Uh, but all my gear points is wrapped up in dinosaur, so. All my gear points are wrapped up in death. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> gear points are wrapped up in that corpse lady in the corner. Oof. Or the head go. dangling from the ceiling. That's true. It could be from either one of those nope. places. If we do oh. run, we have to swipe the head, by the way. I don't Theta did present the idea that we are on a medical ship. So, mm -hmm. please save my head. <laughs> yeah, it's gone a little bit crazy, but we are in the sci-fi future where somebody can just reprogram the machine to be not crazy. Yeah, like your cortical stack is in that head because that's what the clean beheading is supposed to do here. So it's now the modified body. So this this body that stepped up from the table and been poisoned severely, it's got all its penalties and it's a pretty terrible fighter, but I believe it was engaged in combat with uh, a squad of dino, bo uh, dino pets and with Anarchy Bird as well. Yeah. So it's going to try to, as the biggest target, it's going to try to swing at you with its uh, its axe. No, why would it do that? All right, and here's the swing, and it did succeed with a five. 
Uh, I have also succeeded. Yes, and your success was higher than it and a superior success. So it, it swings at you with a with a with a mighty blow, but you're able to either deflect it aside with your uh you have a sword? Yeah, I have a sword. I have a vibro uh sword. Yeah, you catch its blade and deflect its clumsy strikes aside. You can tell it, it, that your your toxins are wreaking havoc on it as it's it's twitching and 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 moving weirdly and it's it's jerking around and it looks like it's incredibly affected by what you've done to it. Yeah, this thing would have been very very dangerous without that. And it's your turn, Anarchy Bird. Uh okay. Well, I have a whole bunch of pets. Uh, how about I tell them to uh, assist me in trying to attack it? Uh, so, we were discussing how to do that. Should I make an animal handling roll? Yeah, we'll say, uh, are you going to try to get them to assist you, or are you trying to get them to just fight as a team against uh, the creature? Uh, I'm getting them to try to assist me, so basically I'm joining in on their pack on this. Yeah, yeah, so make a teamwork. We'll, we'll say that that's an animal control check, or, right? An animal, animal handling? handling. Would, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just roll it flat here uh, without any modifiers, even for simplicity or normalcy. That is still a success. Yeah. So you you're you're able to instruct them enough to uh, attack as one. OK, let me tab over to combat here. So I'm getting plus 30 from them uh, and I will aggressive attack so that I get an extra uh, D10 to my vibroblade. Uh, so if we start this off, I have a 87 of a roll with, uh, to try to reach 70. That is not a success. So you missed. And so I'm just not even going to roll the fray. So you, you're working all together and you're, 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 you're trying to attack it, but uh, it's, it's just managing to get in the way and it's wildly swinging its, its ax around and maybe even firing bursts off on its machine gun as it's, uh, as it's just kind of going wild and it's making you... Keep your it's a lot of both parties just a... trying not to, yeah, trying not to get hurt. <laughs> yeah, you can't land a good blow on it. Mm -hmm. so... uh, and technically, there'd be one like mm, remainder pet, but that, let's not worry about it. Um, how they much can't do enough damage. They have one d six. They can't beat the armor. Yeah, they're not going to be able to get to the armor. So, so that is that round. You guys all, I need everyone in the group to make a I need you to make a reflexes check. Ooh. Success. All right. So uh Anarchy Bird succeeded and so I need Dauphine and Baron von Squilliams. <gasps> Sorry, what? What are we rolling? I was reading about death. You don't have to roll. I, I guess you don't actually have to roll. Okay. Uh, uh, reflex so, save. How yeah, well does that it. body just dodge? So the both of you are, are are taking cover and fighting, and you've got your feet planted pretty well. And I mean, you're an octopus. It makes sense that you're not easily thrown over. But with, there's a huge boom. Yeah, we're in zero G, aren't we? You are. You are. Um, and actually, that probably would help as well um so what this check was is to, it you just didn't get thrown off by what happens as something collides with the ship that you're on and there's a boom as the entire ship shakes and rattles and I mean, there's uh, maybe there's a little bit of f like fog and smoke and some alarms go off some of the machinery around the room sparks as something has hit your ship and you hear uh, over the comms from Doctor Hilbert. You hear uh, there's there's the, some that it's 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 some sort of ship. It's hit it's hit it's it's hit the the Nightingale. Uh, there's there's more though. Be careful. This isn't good, Squilliams. Uh, we got to make a decision. I think. Oh shit. Oh, oh boy. What would you uh, like to do, all... Baron? Yeah, go ahead. Wait, what? What would you like to do, Baron? Um, probably going to want to get off this ship here. We're going to attack. So, uh, so is it my action right now? 
Yep, it's your it's your turn. Your your oh, actions shit. up. Yep. Uh, yeah. Something's collided with your ship. It sounds like there's more ships coming and on the way. It's it's a little unclear. Doctor Hilbert's get passing you a lot of information at this time, but at the moment you're in the fight, you're, there's probably information streaming over from her uh, from her muse about the about what's happening, and you guys can see. Uh, like maybe a, some sort of radar map, and there's one ship that's currently uh, attached to your ship, and there mm -hmm. appears to be several other ships uh, at, at some distance, but closing in on on this ship as well. Um, I'd like to turn to Dr. Helbert then and ask if we would be able to make an escape out of the ship that we took here. Like, uh, if, if, if you can reach capable. us in time... Yeah, we might be able to if you can reach us in time. It it doesn't have much defense systems, but if it it could help. Um, I well, I guess I'm going to take some shots at the medical bot on this turn because we still want to get the cortical stack. Yeah, remember, uh, doc yeah, Doctor Hilbert is currently still on that shuttle that's docked on the side of your ship on the on the on the uh, side of your ship. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So she's she's like working on that on that signals. Uh, I uh, I think I I think I might have some good news though. Just just keep me appraised. How is how is Dolphine? Uh, Dolphine is uh. She doesn't have a good head on her shoulders. Yeah, she's decapitated. <laughs> so we're currently trying to figure that one out. Uh, I'm gonna go full automatic here to do a uh, plus two d10 damage. So hopefully okay. I hit. That would Ooh. not hit, and but that would, can, but that would be a critical fumble. But critical fumbles don't have. I believe we found that critical fumbles don't have any effect on misses, unless a weapon specifically says it. What are the things I can use to like up my uh, ability? Or... So you have your fleck, <laughs> your your points, your your mm -hmm. morph pools. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. I don't know if they can give you a, like, reduce your roll. Um, let me double check. Um, Vigor. Does Vigor do anything? With, with your points, you can, uh, before the roll, you could add 20 to the test number. Oh, it needs to be before the roll? Yeah. Okay. After the roll, you can downgrow to... Uh, you can flip flop your D one hundred roll, except <laughs> that wouldn't help at all. Um, yeah. you could downgrade a critical failure to a regular failure, but that's not going to help. Mm -hmm. Um, so okay, guess it just misses them. So nothing, nothing after. Uh, nothing that would help you here. Although you could spend an insight or a vigor. You could spend a vigor pool point to take another action. Oh, I could do a bigger point to take another action? Yes. Oh, I think I I uh, may have used it already. So, and remember, you can keep track of what you've used. Yeah, yeah. It, well, okay, so it says total, I have one, and current I have one. Yeah, so it looks like you've spent some because so you can yeah. because you can reduce that current number uh when every time you use it you reduce a current gotcha okay um no i'll just i missed it's not a big deal all um, right you missed so you 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 blast away at it but uh your your shots are just going too wild it's got too much recoil when you're firing full automatic i guess so and make sure to dock your ammo there yeah. and next up is the robot doctor himself. So it's uh, it's 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 now deposited uh, Dolphin's body in uh, in two different pays. You know you can rotate PDFs clockwise, right? Yeah, I'm gonna rotate the entire book just to read the one page. <laughs> <laughs> Am I about to lose my cortical stack, boy? <laughs> I'm sure there's probably like a side PDF with those charts only somewhere. That pro uh, most likely. Look, <laughs> no, it's easier no, to move my head. Turn sideways. Yeah. You're out of way anyway. 
<laughs> so it's it's currently put her body in one of these large tubes. It's put her head in another smaller tube, and with its other hands, though, though, so it's it's grappling hands. We're we're busy with that, but its other hands are now going to fall down on Anarchy Bird. It's going to try to buzzsaw you. <clears throat> oh boy. Well, uh, I'm at minus 10 because I chose to aggressive attack to try to get more damage. So uh, let's see the attack first. And the the minus 10, I believe, goes to your score, correct? Uh, I don't know. And I'm not sure it functionally changes. So it, uh, it attempts to do some optional surgery. Uh, it got a 28. It's not a special, uh, and its specialization gives it a, a score of 65. Its roll was a 28. Uh, and because uh, the score is down to 30, that is a 42, which is over. So I've been hit. And it does eight points of damage, and it has... Uh... And this is kinetic. Yep, so I reduced that from eight down piercing. to four. Oh, okay. So I reduced that to six. And it cuts you. It's it's got these large saws and and cutting devices. And as it's cutting you, you can hear the voice of the AI over over the uh, the intercom, saying, uh, "Please refrain from damaging the specimens." Uh, I guess it's you probably must also not damage worth our our current experiments. Yeah. Uh, Please I... return to a safe area and be escorted to a safe zone. <laughs> Uh, I guess it is worth notice, noting that uh, I believe armor piercing was like minus d10 to damage as well. Correct. Uh, armor piercing, that's for armor piercing ammo. Oh, okay. So I guess the sword is perfectly fine then. Got it. Cool. Yes. Uh, 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 anything that has armor piercing already built into it won't reduce damage by a d10. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. And it's the modified body's turn. Uh, and which is going to continue to it's actually going to swing at, at one of the uh, the dinos next to it with its 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 axe as it's just swinging wildly uh, which with a miss uh, a flat up miss it's it's okay. acting erratically and, and doesn't have much control of its own body anarchy bird okay well uh second verse same as the first do i need to control my animals to uh tell them to help me again or are we just gonna roll with it i, I i'm gonna say that as long as you're continuing doing the same actions you won't have to make another check to have them keep doing it okay that sounds but good if if you're fighting a different opponent if you're trying to switch up what they're doing then that'll be when you're making checks got it that makes perfect sense so i'll go ahead and roll and uh my score is 70 then uh, and I will, uh, get it under 70, and I think that's even a superior result. That is, you needed to beat a 66 to get double superior. Uh, let me double check to see if his, fr his fray, if he rolls an 11, it would be a critical, but he does not, he rolls a 13. All so, right, so 15 plus 4 for the superior result, and the extra d10 adds 2, so we are 21 damage that is also armor piercing. All right, and that's kinetic, correct? That is kinetic. I think the uh, last time you were saying you had like 12 or something. Yeah, you did, Knight. That should be 21 points of damage. Yeah, 21, yep. yeah. Okay. Uh, 21 points of damage. You slash him with your, with your weapon. He is incredibly hurt now. Quick mental math. Why is my... My quick mental math is not turning out to be so quick. <laughs> uh, you have wounded it, so it is going to have a minus another ten, uh, another ten point penalty, as it is even more hurt than before. And here's a question uh, for Theta: What does his entrance look like? Oh man, you know I want. I know the entrance I want, but it makes no absolutely got no damn sense. So. It's probably just an explosion in the wall. All right, just a massive uh, explosion, smoke, fire. Yeah. So right, you 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 look back. Uh, maybe one of you is reloading Baron von Squilliams, and you look back, and right next to the door that you entered, the wall explodes with a boom, 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 and the wall just 
evaporates and the, for for a second the whole room is filled with with smoke and debris as this as something blasts a hole in the wall and you see a large shape stepping through uh through the smoke uh oh and all, maybe as if it's almost done intentionally it looks like those floodlights that were behind that in that room that were uh highlighting each of the exhibits Maybe someone has turned those <laughs> floodlights, so it's backlighting him as he steps into this room. What does what does this person look like? And for some reason, ACDC's Hell's Bells has started playing. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, what he's maybe happening? like a seven foot tall uh, figure wearing armor, just massive armor, riot shield in one hand. Pistol in the other. That's right, I used the same hand to indicate two different arms. What of it? But no, he just seems to be a hulking figure that I guess it, sound travels in this uh, medium. Every foot clang is just a, a thud of metal on metal. Uh, here's a question. Does he have any... Is it painted? Is there any sort of iconography drawn on it? Would, is there any way that someone might recognize him based upon how his armor looks? It's just a, uh, I don't know, like a steel gray to dark black uh, mesh kind of looking armor. It's got like scratches all over it from heavy use, but nothing deep enough to like look like a weak point because it's, well, it can't be technically. Well, I'm I'm wondering like... And what'd you say like, like the shape of this was? Humanoid? It's humanoid, but it's very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's enormous. Well, it, it's large, but it's also well-rounded. Like, it's got obvious bulbous protrusions around what would be, uh, like, limbs and everything. Uh, I okay, mean, I'm, technically, I'm, I'm I suppose... Odd piece. Not to, not to overstep my bounds into GM territory, but I guess that would be, like, a hardware test to see if you can identify what sort of armor it is. That's a good it's question. Armor, does, armor. Anyone, does anyone have the hardware skill? <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I do. All right. Yeah, I'm just double checking to make sure, and uh, that's a definite. Oh, I, I no. do. I, mean, I, I do like man. that Eli's t checking my sheet to see if I can identify the armor that I'm wearing. <laughs> you're just the first. You're just the first one I picked up, and I wanted to see. Uh, like, I want to see your picture. That's why you went to my skills page. Understood. Oh, well, we're about to see someone big and scary drop in. Yeah, so you have no idea. Like you've never seen this this armored hulking thing. And at this point in time, uh your your comm link also crackles open as you hear Dr. Hilbert. Whew. Well, I've got good news and bad news. The the, the good news is well, you guys weren't the only one I hired for this job, and it turns out he's here. And at that point you probably all get a like one of those contact cards you you can share currently on people's phones, but the the more advanced sci-fi version of it. So you get his, you know, probably a, a link that you can. You know, Murder boss wants to his comms. with you on Facenet. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the name on it says, I mean, would you have a call sign or would you go by John Bridges? I'd probably just go by Bridges. Yeah. Referred so, to as by last name. Yeah. So you get a me each one of you gets a message. Would you like to build bridges with another friend? <laughs> except, except, that is, shit, quickly. That is horrible. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's like nice, like little flowering around the edges, and there's like someone wants to be your friend. His mom there's made the it. Balloons appear in AR and dis and distract you from the fight in front of you. <laughs> Yeah, his, his mom made his greeting card. He's just never changed it. He's just attached to it. Um, it's got a picture of him from like middle school, like you know his first day to school as, as his as his profile photo still. Terrifying, <laughs> truly terrifying. So, what's the bad news? Uh, the the bad news is I've identified those uh, those other incoming ships. It it appears they're from the Minervan fleet. So, you, he mentions Minervan, and there's uh, 
a little bit of a uh, like a, a a blink into your uh, I mean maybe into your uh, maybe your muses. That's probably the best way to do it. Your muses mm -hmm. will will contact you and uh, you you get a message that the Minervan fleet is a is a splinter faction of the of the Jupiter of the of the forces that took over uh, Jupiter. They were the fleet that was. Uh, that that fled the the ensuing conflict there. Uh, so, you know, I'll give you some more concrete information. So the Minervan fleet, uh, the Minervan fleet is when when the Jove so the Jovian Republic in in the Eclipse Phase world was formed when all when when the fall happened. There was a bunch of military fleets in orbit there, and the the military basically banded together and launched a coup and took over everything on uh on 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 the jovian system however that transition wasn't necessarily peaceful and before that happened excuse me there were there were a number of fights between uh like between different factions in the military and one of the factions that lost was called the Minervan fleet. And they basically were like, we'll come back and uh, get our revenge. And then they fled into the very outer reaches of space. Right. So here so, at this point, it makes perfect sense for this general to have maybe allied up with them. And now they're coming. Yes. So, so we got to finish this up fast. Something has happened there. Yes. And John Bridges, since you just entered... What would you like to do? You blow open the, the, the wall. You've set up these explosives to blow open the wall. You see uh, several people that your your comm network now uh, identifies as, uh, you know, as allies. And uh, you even see it identify, it even maybe just identifies a Dauphine's head and body in the vats where they've been placed. It, it's kind of got like that green glow around them to show their, their allies as well. And you see these cre these uh, the the doctor robot sawing sawing at people and the modified humanoid as well, looking jerky and and the machine boring. the machine and I'll just point upwards right and I uh, obviously I don't uh, I don't connect to any networks I'm completely radio transmissions only <laughs> so yep. no no overlays no HUDs no none of that shit for me thank you. Uh, but yeah, no, I understand what's going on here. I can see a dead body and uh, one missing person. So yeah, that that might be the most interesting thing is that the link that you guys are getting, you your your muse actually has to download a, an app in order to translate his uh, his older model r transmissions, which appear to be radio signals, uh, to to convert to your uh, your your commu your communication network. But, you know, I will aim at my, uh, my larger, uh, weird-looking gun at the, uh, thing, and I will, uh, fire a heap at it. Uh, and I will, of course, aim, because why wouldn't you just take that for a plus ten? Yeah. Which I apparently didn't do anyway, but, uh, still it hits. All right, so you get a you you hit with one superior success. So you want to roll that once. All right, so you hit for a total of twenty four damage as you blast it, and it sh it flies across the table, and boom! There's an explosion, uh, and, and pieces of metal fly in each direction, but the creature is still alive, but it has taken a wound from that. So I will reduce its its melee and its uh, its fray as well. It's interesting that it doesn't list all the other things that you have to put into that field. What is that? I was just noticing that it doesn't say if it's kinetic or energy or any of the other stuff that is in the weapons I think, field. Say, I, think I think those are things you're supposed to enter. Door. I'll be right back. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries, Sean. I I think those are things you're supposed to like type inside those well no uh, like it says armor below. used uh i put k for kinetic and that doesn't show up on there <laughs> so if you have very specific ammo and weapon stuff it doesn't come up oh i don't i don't see that at all under my under 
I just see name, ammo, damage value, firing mode, and range. Name, damage value, firing mode, range, ammo type, armor used, uh, what skill, and then the description field. No, I don't see that at all. Well, then. Is everyone else seeing all those details? Uh, you're probably looking at ranged weapon. I'm in seeker weapon and grenade, because that's what I'm using. Oh, you're under seeker weapon. Oh, yes, I see all that stuff. Yeah, seeker weapon. Yeah, it's also weird. But you've blasted it. That's kinetic, correct? Yeah. All right. So it has done another wound to it, and you blasted it with that many points of damage. It is right. looking in bad shape. There's pieces of metal falling. Some of the some of the arms are, are kind of glitching. You can see sparks. It looks incredibly hurt. Baron Von Squilliams, it is now your turn. It's me. All right, I'm going to take some more shots at the uh, bot here. And uh, still going to go full auto. Okay. Hopefully... And are you doing full auto for to hit or damage? For damage. Du, 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 du. Come on. All right, so you rolled a, a one. Yeah. Uh, it's the lowest possible success roll. Doesn't give you anything additional for that, but you did uh, you did hit, and because it's immobile, it, it's not getting any fray versus your ranged attack, and you just blast it for 23 points of damage, and you you take a few more shots, and the, the creature twitches, and the, the, the many limbs fall limp and fall to the ground and, and kind of just hang from the ceiling now. Ooh, we got him. Well, that's good. We don't have to worry about losing our heads anymore. Yeah. And yeah, so it, it, it stops moving uh, and it, it looks like it's dead. Uh, that just leaves us with the uh, large mutated armored creature in front of us. Yeah, let's see if you can finish it off there, Anarchy Bird. Let's see. Uh, I was looking at Frey the whole time, so technically I'm rolling 60, not 70. I roll one. Okay. I'm pretty good. Oh. Hey. I roll, I click melee instead of Iron Blade. So uh, here is the damage for that, which is 15. All right, uh, 15 and points with of damage. With the aggressive attack side of it, that is 18 total armor piercing. And that is actually enough damage to kill that one as well. So you, you step up and give it a slash across the torso, and it just falls back over onto the operating table and lays on its back. Uh, so right now, so we haven't seen the general. There's a fleet on the way, and we need to act fast. Um, that is correct. How can I figure out who this uh, creature is, if it's just like something that it made up, or if this is actually the general who's trying to put himself into this body? Uh, that is a good question. Um, I, I am a gene hacker. This is technically my job. That is a really good question. I wonder if there's a way to identify... There, there has to be a way to identify who is in someone's stack. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say... You can roll. Um, let's say you. What, let's look at your skills. We are in a laboratory uh, right now. What about laboratory operation? Yeah, if, if you want to take some time and and use your lab ops, then yeah, you could you could use use some of the machinery around here, and yeah, you could make that check. Ooh, 82. I will put a flex point to make that a 28 if that's okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. So, and I don't, you don't have to necessarily use a flex point. Oh, Any what would I need of to your, use? Well, I'm, I'm just saying you don't have to specifically use a flex point. Oh, any okay. Any of well. these, uh, any of the points can be used to manip to do those base manipulations of, okay. of the, of, of the, um, uh, that's good. Like then. Go, yeah, the flipping. I only have flex points right now, so I will use a flex yeah. point then. All right. So you use one flex point, and you start analyzing this uh, this body, and you 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 hook you hook one of the tubes up to the the back, and you start fiddling with it, and it is not the uh, the general. All right. So I'll turn back to you two and go. 
Well, it's not the general. We still gotta find him. This is where the heat center was, though, right? It is rather close to the heat center. It is not exactly the heat center. So but then we only have a room, couple more minutes to go. Anarchy, is that yes. your name? Yeah. Can you reprogram one of these machines around here to put that body back together? I I could stay here and try to work on that if you want to go on ahead. Yeah. Uh, here, I'm sending you the AR information right now. I don't get that. Uh, okay, go down that hallway and follow Squilliams. <laughs> All right. Nice to meet oh. you. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, uh. Um, so I will stay behind for a moment and see if there's any sort of immediate medical uh, thing I can do to put the body back together. And if not, I'm just going to pack up the head because the head has the cortical stack. So just just to give you guys a description of this room, there are, mm -hmm. there are three exits out of this. Well, now there's four exits. There's a wall that's there's a hole that's been blown into the wall and a door, and the both of those enter into that strange museum you saw. Mm -hmm. There are two other exits. One of them is an exit that heads off to your. We'll say if if you guys are facing if the top of the screen is north, then this one appears to be heading back towards where you came towards the west. This one, you see uh, part of the wall, uh, part of the wall where there's all these tubes and vials and vats appear to be able to end, like pass through the wall through some sort of kind of like one of those airport security where they've got those, what they call those, those dangly little, you know what I'm talking about? There's, they're, they dangle down and they're kind of plasticky. And, yeah, yeah. You know, you see them at like car washes and No, uh, I have no idea. Keep describing them. <laughs> a plastic curtain. Okay. Yeah, yeah, a, a ribboned a ribboned curtain might be the there right, you go. Uh, word. Yeah. So uh some sort of sci fi plasticky ribbon curtain uh <laughs> separates the wall in which it looks like these vats might be able to to pass through the wall. So that goes mm -hmm. to the left. And the door to the right doesn't have any uh distinguishing features about it, but it looks like it does head closer towards that hot spot. Okay. Uh, so I will stay behind. I will try to manage the fats and get the head and maybe see if there's an emergency medical procedure I can do to put it back on and get Delphine going. Uh, and if so, not, I have the head. Oh, I can't hear that over... <laughs> Your, your mic, you need to put Sorry. your mic. Uh, like, if possible, could I use a flex point to call in, like, one of the galaxy's best plastic surgeons, since I am really wealthy, and this is ridiculous, that I can't fix my sleeve by just putting a head onto a body. Uh, well, so, you never know. We're a little far out for the, uh, the plastic surgeon to be uh, able to... Okay. It's the uh, ship's version of the emergency medical hologram. It has a backlog... Of uh, emergency, uh, what do you call them? Like forks of surgeons and whatnot. So a copy of the best uh, surgeon from ten years ago copied onto the ship. So were you it's in a, a biomorph or a synth morph, Isadora? I was in a biomorph. Okay. Um, they're not going to be able to. You you don't think they're going to be able to put your head back on and reestablish that morph? Uh, but, but hey, I'm a uh, I'm a gene hacker. I can make you a new body exactly like the one you had. Oh, can he do? And that? I can put in neon lights. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I got your attention now. So Forget don't worry too much about it. Bodies and deaths are cheap. So you most likely won't be able to do that immediately because that takes yeah. time to grow a body. Yeah, but exactly. If if you were able to find a body on this ship, you could certainly re-sleeve into that body. Eli just wants me to re-sleeve into some ugly, ugly old body. Uh, yeah. The I only mean... bodies he's described being in here so far are the uh, Cro-Magnum Neanderthal bodies. So <laughs> just throwing <laughs> that out there. I know. Well, I mean, that's exactly that's exactly it. This this is a lab. This is my job. I have the cortical stack. I know how to use the technology, and I can probably summon up one of the bodies that hasn't been stabbed to death yet. Do I have to? <laughs> well, it'll get you running around for a little bit. All right. Well, Isadora, do you have a flex point? 
Uh, I think it was on my morph, so no. I'll look. Everybody starts with a uh, flex point. I see your ego. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should have an automatic one flex point on your ego. So this is this is the sort of thing that you would use on your, on your flex point. I mean, I, I did come up with an idea, but you rejected it. So I'm just trying to adapt your idea to the to to fitting this scene. So calling in a plastic surgeon from a, a renowned plastic surgeon from around the galaxy might work if you were in a like a, a popular city or somewhere where he could just you know yeah we're not in civilization right now yes but in this case you have your own gene hacker and you are on a medical ship and you're already seeing all these bodies and these limbs so you could spend a flex point and say that they've got several bodies on on storage that they could use in and his he could just pull one of them up into this operational room and re-sleeve you into that body. Can I re-sleeve into a synth morph? They yeah, are they most any likely robots aren't going to have. Yeah, they're most likely not going to have any synthetic bodies. All right. I mean, yeah, I'll just take anything. I guess doesn't really matter. Well, I mean, couldn't the flex point be just a copy of your old body? Like they just happen to have one that's exactly like you were. True. Except that would be spending a flex point for a morph that costs... How much was your morph, Isadora? God, I don't know. I, I worked really hard on it. It's probably... It was probably around 20 points, including, like, my negative. So, yeah. That's what's going on there. So, I'm going to say they're not going to have any of those bodies on... on... All right. the hospital, I'll let yeah. you guys randomly pick a body for me. The problem with a uh, synthmorph body, though, is that you would have like a negative uh, sleeving thing to get into it. Ah, uh, true. So it'd be a, entirely possible that you would just fail sleeve, and we'd be okay. even worse. Well, well no, the, just... he wouldn't. She wouldn't fail to sleeve in it. She would just she would sleeve in it, and then she'd have penalties, I believe. Well, no. there's no synths here, anyways. Right. Well, not unless we got that medical bot working again. They will have any morphs that are worth zero, one, or two. Any biomorphs that are worth zero, zero one, or two. You morph know what? Points. I'll take the Cro Magnon. I don't feel like using my flex point. So. Okay. Let me just go ahead and take a double check at that. I think that probably is uh, in the cheap range. Yeah, it's two points. Well, no. So it, it's it's using you're using a flex point to find this body in the first place. Oh, yeah. I see. You want me to use my flex point? Right. Yes, I want, yeah, and I want basically you guys to be me using your flex I go, point. oh, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, the entire point of these pool is these pools, and the reason why I'm telling you you should spend a flex point is because these pools are meant to be used frequently and often. All right. So you guys should be using them and then refilling them and refreshing them. And so yeah, taking rest. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to yeah. encourage you to use I'll them. I'll take more whatever often. you're okay with, Eli. Oh, what's that? There's yeah, an ultimate on the ship. Put her in the ultimate. Yeah, I said zero, yeah, and zero one, or two morph point bodies that are biological. Mm. You could be a squid. <laughs> um, I'll also say that <laughs> they will have. Dolphin doesn't like squids. They're what? Subpar, subpar to dolphins. Oh my god! So, oh, that famous war. <laughs> that famous twenty one thirty war of dolphin versus. Yeah. I'll sell you. I'll sell my bathwater better than your bathwater. <laughs> oh my god, my bathwater's premium. <laughs> premium. <laughs> <laughs> that OG bathwater. Good, good. And and now we have gamer pod juice. We've upgraded from bathwater. Um, <laughs> pod juice. Yes. juice. You got octopus. <laughs> Octopus juice. Where my beheaded morph head lied in the vat. All right. Well, I mean, uh, to be fair though, people people still like to eat squid. Still frowned upon to eat dolphins. Hey, if you're hungry, you can eat anything. That's. But yeah, I think uh, from whatever I've on re-sleeving, uh, it can happen pretty quickly to just transfer the mind over. But you do it slower normally when you want like that nice subtle transition of consciousness, so everyone's nice and happy and cozy. But you're dead. So it doesn't change anything. So you get shoved in quickly. Oof. So for that, I don't think I need anything from... I don't think I need anything from you, Griffin. Yeah, I, I even then I'm like a professional. I'm going to make this check. Uh, I think it comes down to how much psychological damage uh, 
uh, Delphine is going to take. Yeah, so what body were you choosing? Uh, I'll just take the number one biomorph, whatever that is. What was the point cost? Between zero and two. I'll take the zero one. <laughs> Um, Sorry, what? It's what only page? one zero one. I know it's a flat. I mean, I think a, 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 you could be in a neo avian. I think that's zero. That's yep, there you yep, go. I'll actually. join the bird world. How about that? Yeah, be a bird. I'm like, yes, bird. Everyone should be bird. Free bird. But squid is the way. Okay, so I is that an does that have an, the exotic morphology trait? Uh, yes. Uh, the highest level of it, even three. All right, so, so that's actually did the that, worst possible fit, technically. But but also, you were uh, an exotic dolphin to begin with, weren't you? That's true. Uh, but, I think the way it describes it is that if you're exotic, you're probably fine with exotic. I mean, do I have to spend my points? I'm like the exotic like... morphology is like from a human standpoint. Uh, I you don't have you don't have to spend any points, Isadora. Um, but what you have to do is I need you to roll a SOM check, uh, S O M. I... So the the somatics, all right. And because you chose an exotic, well, even regardless of the fact you chose an exotic morph, that is a failure. And so while you have been uh, integrated and re-sleeved into this body, uh, it's for something you're just you're just not quite used to being in an avian, a neo-avian bird body. So you're gonna have a minus 10 to all actions for the next three days. So what? one because you failed, and an additional two days because you had over 33 and over 66. So you had two Two superior failures. I'm not gonna fight. I'm just gonna hang back. Did you bring your coat with you? Yes. Yeah. My useless coat. So I mean, that's still around, though, right? So you can just pick that up. Yeah. So I also need you to make a will check. So this is because you are resleeving into a new body. Um, this is this is a check about alienation, continuity, remembering your death, and just like a lack of memory. So you're sleeved into this, and you wake up into a room that's absolute chaos. You probably still see your old body like hanging in in a pod, and your head looking at you, and the walls blasted over. There's blood everywhere. There's uh, a, a strange human body that you remember poisoning laying on the ground. And because you pass this, you don't take any stress damage from uh, from your resleeving. 